In today's podcast, we're going to be giving you guys five players that you can buy low now in fantasy basketball. I expect these players to bounce back or I at least expect them to continue doing what they're doing and maybe people are panicking too much on their fantasy basketball performance. We're going to talk about it. Let's go! Jordan, open. Chicago with the lead. talking about practice. LeBron James with no record for human life. Andy Bogba! Back out to Allen. His three-pointer. Bang! Curry for three. Wow! Unbelievable. Making it rain in New York. We the North are now we the champions. Not the destination. G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys Fantasy. Uh, and uh, today we're going to be doing the Buy Low Show. Tomorrow we'll be doing the Sell High Show. And then uh, we will also be recapping the Monster 14 game NBA slate on uh, Wednesday night's um, podcast uh, immediately after the games. I'm thinking about doing that one as a live show. So uh, let me know down in the comment section, guys. Do you want it to be live? I'm thinking about doing it live so that I can get it out sooner and faster. And you can kind of come along and uh, talk to me. I probably won't, especially with 14 games to recap, I won't answer too many questions per se during the uh, show. But I want to kind of get it out faster because by the time I record a podcast, Recapping 14 bloody NBA games uh, and then, you know, edit it the way I wanted to, which doesn't take too long, but then upload, you know, get the thumbnail and everything sorted, all the, you know, everything that goes into making a YouTube video and a podcast. Um, it, a lot of times it's really late in America and a lot of you guys are asleep. And yeah, so I was thinking about doing that one live um, immediately, maybe sort of 15 minutes after the end of the last game. Let me know down in the comments section below on YouTube if you're watching over here on this podcast, if you would prefer that one to be live so I can get it up sooner, um, or if you don't mind waiting and maybe you want it. I don't know. I don't know what the advantages are. I do a lot of my podcasts in one take anyway, not a whole lot of editing uh, going on. So I, I'm, I'm leaning towards it. So let me know down in the comment section if you want it live and it'll get out a bit earlier. But today, we're going to be doing five players that I believe you can buy low in fantasy basketball. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. And a disclaimer, I am recording this podcast before the end of the games on Monday night. So the rankings that I'm going to display here are rankings that are accurate as of when I'm recording right now, but they probably will not be accurate by the time you are viewing this podcast. Um, I've used, in, used season-long rankings because I think that that won't be changed too much by the time this podcast comes out, and it will be pretty close. It'll give you a fair idea. The only asterisk is a couple of these players are still playing, and I don't know how they perform. So if they absolutely go off, uh, which I don't expect them to, but if they absolutely dominate, then um, maybe the buy low window will be a little bit harder than what I'm talking about in this podcast. But let's get stuck into it, starting with a player who has already played at the time of me recording, and that is Cade Cunningham, who to me is someone that I see a lot of things in social media, on Twitter, people complaining about what he's been doing this season, people saying that this guy's killing my fantasy team and why did I pick him so high? And I look at what Cade has been doing, and yes, whilst it's been mildly disappointing, I would say, I would also say that if you drafted him and you are complaining about his poor field goal percentage and his high turnovers and he's killing your fantasy roll star, then maybe you didn't know what Cade Cunningham was going to be doing this season. Now, he has not lived up to expectations. He's been underwhelming compared to what I projected him so far this season. But I look at his numbers and I'm by no means looking at them going, oh my God, it's disaster. It's way worse than I thought. It's like, okay, not as good as I'd hoped. Hasn't taken as big a step forward as I have so far. But kind of along the same side, uh, same, you know, uh, kind of things that we expect from Cade Cunningham and what he's done previously. So in terms of his rankings so far on the year, again, season rankings, uh, he is the 89th ranked player in minus one settings. I don't believe this is counted today's game so far. He's the 218th ranked player per game in nine category leagues, and he's the 56th ranked player in Yahoo points leagues. Um, and yes, that is not including today's game. So in terms of what, why do I think Cade Cunningham is a buy low opportunity? Now, he might not be a buy low in your league, depending on how your league drafts and maybe if they're listening to uh, podcasts like myself and they understand the nuances of fantasy, especially in category leagues more so. But 
if you're in a league that really just loves that ranking number next to Yahoo or looks over at Basketball Monster and goes, oh my God, this guy's outside the top 200 in category leagues. His turnovers suck, man. Can't deal with his turnovers. Um, and maybe if you're in a roto league, that is a little bit more concerning. Obviously, um, it's a little bit different in format to format. We spend a lot of our time in head-to-head leagues because that's the majority of leagues a lot of the time. So he is someone that if I look at what he's doing so far, 21 and a half points, 1.9 threes, 3.7 rebounds, 7.3 assists, 0.8 steals, 0.3 blocks, 40.5% from the field, 87% from the free throw line and 4.8 turnovers. Two huge negatives here in terms of his nine category rankings. And as that game loads, he is now the 205th ranked player. So moving up a little bit. Um, so he, the huge negatives to me here are obvious. It's the field goal percentage, massive negative at 19 and a half attempts at 40% and 4.8 turnovers, which I believe is either leading or tied leading the league in turnovers. So that is going to massively change his ranking. Now, when we look at someone in a minus one sense, what I do, for those, again, who forget or have not heard, in a minus one ranking, I weight the turnovers down to 25%. So I'm not, like, punting it completely. That factors in a small bit of weighting for his turnovers. So to me, I use it as a tiebreaker because if I'm going to choose between two players, um, you know, like a Tyrese Maxey and a Kate Cunningham, both of them are giving me a similar level of assist, but Tyrese Maxey is obviously turning the ball over far less. So that's going to be a tiebreaker for me. I'm going to want to choose that player. Because in nine category leagues, it is still a category. So I weight it only at 25% compared to the other ones that I weight at 100%. And then we take away the player's worst category, which for Cade is his field goal percentage. So that brings him down to the 89th ranked player. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's it's much better already, right? So just in terms of doing the same things as what he's been doing, just changing the way you view a player, it dramatically changes how we should be valuing them. And I think that that is a better reflection of what Kay Cunningham has done so far this season. He is not someone that I'm dropping for John Concha or I'm dropping for, uh, I don't know who else, um, I don't know, Jalen Smith or anything like that. I'm not dropping him for a player like that who is ranked, quote unquote, better than them or is more valuable based on rankings to my team than those guys. Yes, if he was not on my team, I'd be doing better in turnovers, but I would be doing a lot worse in points, free throw percentage, assists, threes. Um, and yeah, it just there's a trade-off there that I don't think makes sense when it comes to rankings. Now, where can he improve? Now, the, the thing that I... Well, first of all, before we start about where he can improve, the thing that I think is real and is a red flag and has changed my evaluation on him is the rebounding numbers. He's at 3.7 rebounds per game versus 6.2 last season in the uh, 33 minutes and 5.5 the season before. Now, I actually think the rebounds are down and going to continue to be down this season because you have Asar Thompson who has been put into this team and is grabbing every single rebound under the sun. And Jalen Duran, when he is out there, is also grabbing a lot of rebounds compared to what he did last season. So I do think those rebounding numbers are going to be down compared to my preseason projections. Now, he's averaging 3.7. I think he's probably going to be closer to 4.7. But even that is still down compared to what he did last season and in higher minutes. So I think that can be slightly better, but not by much, in my opinion, because those are being affected by new variables on this team. So granted, compared to where I had him in the preseason, that hurts his overall value and I've dropped him down because of that. But the rest of the numbers are fine. 21.4 points on 40.5% from the field. Now that is not good shooting, but all it takes is a stretch of games at you know, you know close to 50%, which we have seen already so far this season. He's had a game at 50%. He's had a game at, where was the other one? Uh, 47 and a half percent, a 48.1 percent game, the first game of the season, and those games, whilst not super impressive, definitely doable for a player like Cade. Um, that will bump his average up. Now he will never be a positive field goal percentage guy, and I never expected that from him this season. But um, last year he was at 41.5, the year before 41.6. So I think at minimum he's going to see a 10 percentage usage, 10 uh, percent field goal percentage bump to what he's doing, which would take him from 20. 
1.4 points to basically 22 points. He'll go from 1.93s to 3.3s, and that field goal percentage won't be quite as big of a drain if you weren't punting that category. So I do think that that can definitely improve, and I think it actually can improve to 43 to 44%, being a player that is in his third year now, um, effectively his second season because last year he missed a lot due to injury. And I do also think this team has terrible spacing, and that will eventually have to be addressed, especially with players like Bogdanovich coming back. So I do believe that the free field goal percentage, three-point percentage can come up, which will get him up closer over to two threes per game, over sort of 23, 24 points per game. And if you have that with a player who's also averaging seven to seven and a half assists per game, the other thing is that the steals and blocks, I do think can come up. Now, maybe the blocks don't reach 0.6 as what he did last year or 0.7 the year before, but I do think he can get closer to half a block per game instead of 0.3. And I do think the steals can come up closer to one steal per game. And all those little things in terms of my projections get him to a top 50 minus one ranked player. And I feel very, very confident with that. The last thing that I'll talk about with Cade Cunningham is just the, if, the reason you would go and trade for Cade is if you are a team that can either A, handle his poor field goal percentage and you don't care too much about his turnovers, or B, you're punting those categories. And I've talked extensively about punting, but I'm going to continue to hammer home the narrative because when you're trading for a player, don't think about, do I play, trade this player for this player? And it's like, okay, give me no more context than that. You're trading for stats. Does the stats that this player has help my team or does it hurt my team more? So if I'm in a team and I'm doing terribly in field goal percentage, well then stuff it. Who cares about field goal percentage? I'm going to continue to be bad in it and I'm going to try and improve all my other categories. So maybe I'm going to trade a guy who's a good field goal percentage guy, but poor in points and assists for Cade Cunningham increasing two categories whilst decreasing one. But hey, I'm already at the bottom. There's nothing, you can't get worse by being worse than last in field goal percentage. So that's what I'm going to try and do. So always remember that every team is specific. And a lot of the times people will ask me, should I trade this player to this player? A lot of times I'm going to, <laughs> it's hard to continue to explain that, but I'm going to I'm gonna stop answering a lot of those questions if you don't give me more context. What I want you to try and do, if you do want your questions answered, ask me, should I trade this player for this player? I'm strong in these categories. I'm weak in these categories. I'm punting this. Um, I'm in, you know, a 10 team, a 12 team, a 14 team league. That will give you more information. I'll be able to answer your question a lot better. But just to give you an idea, the difference in value, if I'm punting field goal percentage, Cade Cunningham is the 38th ranked player this season. If I'm punting field goal percentage and turnovers, 38th. He is the 38th ranked player, guys. And that is on 40.5% shooting. And some people had have, have you believe that he's outside the top 200, outside the top 150, and that he is a guy that is hurting your team more than helping your team. I just flat out disagree with that. The discourse on Cade Cunningham to me is crazy. I am not panicking at all. He is slightly underwhelming my expectations. I do think the rebounds are going to be lower than last year. But other than that, it's kind of been what I expected from Cade with a slight underwhelming start to the season in, in regards to his shooting and steals. That's it. I do think he can be much, much better than this. And even what he's doing is not too bad, in my opinion. All right, let's move on to the next player here, which is Jalen Williams. Now, Jalen Williams is an interesting case and a bit of a, a lesson for a lot of us when it comes to ranking a player in a smaller sample size. Because a lot of the time, the the talk about Jalen Williams was what did he do at the post All-Star break last season? And he was sort of like a top 40 ranked player, I believe, in that time. The reason he was able to do that was insane steal numbers, great efficiency, and just the magic of small sample sizes. Because small sample sizes means that players that would ordinarily rank ahead of him for the entire season maybe had a down patch at that time, or there was players injured, so other guys were elevated. All sorts of funky things can happen when you shorten a sample size to a specific date that suits a player when they performed really well. So I do think J Jalen Williams was maybe a victim of that. Not quite as much as I thought it would have been in the preseason. But again, if you thought he was going to, you know, the ranking was going to carry over to the entire season's ranking, uh, I think that that's going to be a mistake. However, what is happening with Jalen Williams is he's still playing exceptionally well. 17 and a half points, one, three, four rebounds, three and a half assists on 51.8% from the field, 
88% from the free throw line. Those are all really good numbers, and I think that that's basically where they're going to stay. I don't know if it's going to get much better than that, but what is going to get better, and this is literally all it's going to take for him to jump another 30 or 40 spots, is the steal numbers. He's at 0.8 steals on the season so far this year. And I think at the end of last year, he was averaging 1.7 for the final sort of couple of months. Now, maybe we shouldn't expect 1.7 steals, but th- there's no reason he can't from this point on, you know, everything is done. When you trade replay, you're not getting the stats that they already put up. But from this point on, who say he can't average 1.7 steals? It's a low volume category. Any game, he could go off for three or four steals. Uh, and I still think he has that capability. So... If you can get him, and again, I'll read out his rankings. He's 93rd in minus one, 85th in nine cat, 96th in Yahoo points. The points league, it's probably less of a buy low opportunity because the steals won't change his numbers that much. But definitely in category leagues, you start going from 0.8 to 1.4 steals. You average an extra 0.6 steals per game. You're going to go from 93rd to 53rd or 43rd um, very, very quickly, just like that. And that's all it takes. And on any given week, he can average you three steals per game, really. Like, he could do that. Like, if in a three-game sample size, he has a four-steal game, a three-steal game, and a two-steal game, bang, there's a three-steal average for the week. And for that week, he might be the top 20 player um, and because he's got good percentages. Now, in terms of rankings, it's just another lesson for us to maybe, you know, not value those steals quite as highly as maybe some of the other categories or at least take those numbers with a pinch of salt You'll notice with um, Jalen Williams, he is higher ranked in nine category rankings compared to minus one. That is not necessarily because his turnovers are super low. 2.2 is it's slightly worse than average, in fact. But he is also not someone that excels in any one category, and he's not um, ruined by any one category. He averages 0.2 blocks, which is his worst category, but it's only a negative 0.79 Z score, which compared to a lot of other guys who have really poor free throw percentage or field goal percentage or any other really low volume or a really low category in a high volume stat, that is not going to be as negatively affected. Um, and conversely, if you're punting that category, he's not going to be as much boosted in in that stat. So he is someone that is probably better suited to a more balanced build, but he still has a lot of use in in any build, really. So I do think that he is someone that if if the owners are getting very frustrated with the lack of steals, I still think they're going to come. It's just, again, small sample size. It's only been a, a short stretch of the season. They're going to come, I think. I don't think it's necessarily something we have to be too concerned about. Maybe instead of 1.7, it's 1.4. But again, that's still a big change for his overall value. So I do think he is a buy low. I'd be happy to send anyone who's sort of like, I don't know, maybe a 75th ranked player, 80th ranked player. Um, You know, I'd be happy to do that. I think he can be in a minus one setting, sort of top 60 moving forward. If those deals come back up, and again, it just has to suit what you what you need. I don't think he's going to be a big rebounder or a big assist or blocks guy, um, but I do think the efficient scoring, the um, steals are going to come back up, and I just think he's a really solid player all the way around. So I do think it's going to um, come back up for him. Let's talk about Devin Vassell, who has been quite frustrating to start the season, mostly due to the fact that he's been in and out of the lineup due to uh, a few injuries. So the groin tightness uh, held him out for a couple of games earlier in the year, came back and, and then again played only 12 minutes in his game back, but then jumped straight back up to 30 plus minutes for two games, dropped back down to 20 minutes and has missed the last couple of games again with uh, the adductor injury again. So similar injury. It is frustrating. It is annoying for people who have him. So that is the perfect time to strike with the buy low. Also, the fact that he's been limited in some of the minutes so far has limited his uh, value when he has been out there. So altogether, I think that provides a perfect storm to buy low on a player like Devin Bissell. He has been the 112th ranked player in minus one rankings, the 94th player in nine category rankings, and 101st in Yahoo points. He has been averaging, uh, as I just look him up here, that's in a points league setting, so I'll switch that back over to a category league setting. He has been averaging um, 17 points, 2.43s, 3.6 rebounds, 2.8 assists, 1 steal, 0.1 blocks. Really good uh, efficiency, 49.6% from the field. Uh, Usage at 22.5% and 73.3% from the free throw line. 
So in terms of his production, the minutes at 29 minutes per game can definitely rise. I do expect that to be closer to something like 33, 34 minutes per game, which should see all of those numbers just tick up a little bit. Um, I also think that the free throw percentage can come up uh, quite a bit as well. So he is in the past averaged nearly 84% from the uh, from the free throw line. Last year he was at 78. So at least he's going to jump up another 5 or 6% from the free throw line, I believe, turning that number from a negative into a positive. So I think that's going to wildly swing his value as well. And... Uh, I think that's really all it takes. Like he's shooting well from the field, you know, steal per game in 29 minutes. You get that up to 34. That's 1.2 steals. Um, And then the minutes, uh, sorry, the points as well. So again, adding those minutes in, the usage could come up, but even if it doesn't, extra minutes out there, that's been affected by a few injury affected games. And you've got someone who's basically, in my opinion, a pretty lock to be a top 70, top 60 player in my, um, you know, in fantasy basketball leagues in, in the category league side. Maybe in a Yahoo points, he's more of a top 75, top 80 guy. So you've got at least 20 to 30 spots of value, I believe you can get on a Devin Vassell. And even um, you might be able to get him for cheaper than that because of the fact that he is missing some of these games and has been frustrating to start the year. So I'd be floating out someone around that top 100, top 90-ish value and seeing if I can land a Devin Vassell because at that point, even if his injuries do linger on, it's not like you've given up a whole bunch for someone like him. And I do think that he can have a big second half of the year, assuming that he can stay healthy, which has been frustrating for him so far. So a little bit of risk, but I think that the reward will be worthwhile. Let's talk about everyone's favorite punching bag right now, Clay Thompson, who, uh, shout out to Josh Lloyd, has been a, a very regular um, feature on the Washed Watch section that he's got over there. Now, again, I'm recording this podcast whilst the uh, Golden State Warriors Houston game is going on. So if he pops off the 60 points and 10 threes, I'm not going to know about it, and that would effectively ruin the buy low. But up until this point, he has been awful. Absolutely dreadful. There's no denying it. 193rd in minus one, 221st in nine category rankings, and 166th in Yahoo Points Leagues. First of all, the fact that his highest ranking is on a Yahoo Points League, which doesn't reward three-pointers made, should be an alarm bell for a lot of you to say that, okay, maybe it's going to get better than this. I don't believe that Clay Thompson is in any threat of his role or minutes or anything like that being reduced because he's Clay freaking Thompson. He means so much to this franchise and they're not going to give up on him. I don't believe. He also is shooting 40% from the field hitting 2.3 threes and shoot, and and playing 29 minutes per game. Now, the only alarming thing here, maybe the minutes are going to be a little bit lower. He was at 33 minutes last year. Maybe he doesn't quite reach that this season because, I mean, the Warriors have got to change something up. It's not looking the, great, the greatest right now. But last year, he averaged 22 points, 4.4 threes. This year, he's averaging 14 points, 2.3 threes. Uh, The usage is down, which is, again, a concern because I don't think it's going to get back as high as last year. But if you go from 40% to 43% and 2.33s up higher to 33s per game, it's a dramatic change around in his value. I believe that he is someone that is being slept on. He also is a guy that often gets criticized for not providing much else outside of his points and threes, which is true. That's 100% true. But he is still, in my opinion, one of the elite three-point shooters in the NBA. He's going through a cold stretch right now, and he is older. But this is a guy that can go off at any given game for a 40-point night, hit eight threes, and he's going to be continually given the green light to do so. He also had something kind of like this to start last season, where in his first few games, he he shot uh, 46%, 43%, 30%, 12%, 31%, 36%, 37%, 42%, 33%, 23 37%, 35%. And then... He turned it on and he started really going well, averaging a huge, uh, had a big stretch there where he's put up 20, 41, 18, 20, 21, 26, 28, 22, 34 points all in a row. He later on this season had a 50 plus game. He had several 40 plus games after that as well. So it's a long, long season, guys. He's going to shoot his way out of it. I do believe I'm confident with that. And I believe you can get him very cheap in leagues. So if you need threes, first of all, that needs to be important because, for example, in a, in a team like my industry pickup team, I don't need threes, so I'm not going to really bother trying to go and trade out for Clay Thompson. 
But if threes help you, if points help you, if good free throw percentage helps you, then go and get him. If you need a player that's going to give you assists and steals and blocks, well, then Clay Thompson is not your man. But I do believe that he has a fair way that he can come up. I still think that he has the potential to be a top 100 category league guy when it comes to minus one rankings. Um, which is lower than I had him in the preseason. I do think the minutes do come down. Maybe the usage is down permanently as well. So instead of 26% usage, it's more like 23 24%, which does lower his volume because he is reliant on that. But I don't think he's someone that we should be dropping, which some people are asking me. And I definitely think that he's someone that if you need points and threes can still provide you that. Be aware, the field goal percentage will be a negative. It will hurt you on some weeks. So maybe best suited to a punt field goal percentage build or a team that is maybe punting assists and turn oh, sorry assists and steals and you've got a lot of big guys in there um, that can float your field goal percentage and it's you know it's strong enough to withstand the off nights that he's not shooting very well so I do think that he is a buy low candidate and you can get him very cheap so buy very low send your last couple of players out and see if you can get Clay Thompson because uh, people are very frustrated uh depending on how well the game that he's playing on right now goes. Last player for today, we've got Cam Johnson, another shooter that is struggling right now. He's missed a bit of time as well with the injury, Um, missed several of the first, uh, sorry, played the first game, then missed several games after that. And um, he's been okay since coming back, but without being outstanding, he is um, currently the 148th ranked player in minus one rankings, 162nd in nine category leagues, and 132nd when it comes to Yahoo points leagues at time of recording. He's averaging 13.7 points per game, 2.23s, five rebounds, 1.8 assists, a steal, and 0.2 blocks on 40% from the field, 85% from the free throw line with 1.7 turnovers. The things that turn around really quickly in that one, again, it's the field goal percentage, guys. 40% from the field. The last two seasons, he's gone 47 and 46% from the field. That is going to definitely come up. If we take him from 40 up to 46%, he goes from 137 on the similar level of attempts, basically up to 18, 19 points per game. He goes from 2.23s to 3 threes per game. I also think that his steals can be a little bit higher as the minutes start to scale up. He's averaging 28 minutes per game. Um, you know, boost that up to something like 31, 32 minutes per game. He can get you closer to 1.2, 1.3 steals per game. And that is enough to basically boost this guy up nearly 100 ranking spots in nine category leagues, um, probably up another 50 spots in a points league as well. So he is someone that definitely is just getting, um, I guess, small sample size, injury affected average, um, low field goal percentage affected average, Both of those things, I believe, are going to increase and get better. And if people are impatient or falling down the standings, you can have an opportunity where you can go and get him. Again, if you're looking for someone who's going to give you blocks and big assist numbers or anything like that, that's not your guy. But he's going to give you efficient scoring, good threes, and solid steals with decent enough rebounds. That's useful for a lot of teams out there. He's also not going to turn the ball over a lot either. So... Really, really valuable player in a lot of situations. So I think that he is someone that you can go and buy low if people are being impatient. Um, And again, last game, he also put up a bit of a stinker, which also helps. So last game, he only put up nine points and the minutes are down a little bit. A couple of blowouts in there as well, maybe affecting the minutes. So I do think that he is someone you can go and get a sneaky little buy low on. All righty, guys. That is the end of the video today. Let, let's actually just check on Clay Thompson. Has he started the game off really hot and I'm sounding like an idiot or is he going to continue uh, to play well? Let's have a look. End of the first quarter and Clay Thompson is... Oh, he has. He's, he's hitting. He's hit three threes so far and he's scored 12 points. So we'll see how that game ends up. Could be a waste of time in that segment. But uh, even still, he was really a guy that people were thinking about dropping. So you might, despite him playing a good game here, maybe you still be able to execute your buy low. But we'll have to see how that one ends up. But in the meantime, guys, like this video. Give this a big thumbs up. If you've been watching a lot of the, a lot of the videos and podcasts I've been doing, Anytime you're on here, please, uh, it would really, really help if you guys give this one a thumbs up so we can keep helping the algorithm out, getting this video out to as many people as possible, keep the views up so I can keep doing a lot of this content and spending the amount of time I do on it. Stay tuned for the sell high video coming tomorrow and also the big lengthy live recap show that we're going to be doing on Wednesday night, guys. Until then, catch you later. Bye.